The WWE 2K series has been quite on a roller coaster ever since 2K obtained the rights to produce the games back in 2013, and a lot has happened with the franchise in the last 10 years, such as moving to a new generation of consoles, developer Ukes going all elite, and even recent entries have been getting a lot of bad press. I mean, what hasn't been said about WWE 2K20 at this point? After the cancellation of 2K21 and asking feedback from the community, 2K releases the newest entry to tie up with WrestleMania, saying that it hits different. So does WWE 2K22 has all the tools to be in the main event after two years? Or is it time to wish 2K best of luck in their future endeavors? If you are new to the channel, Superman punch that subscribe button and super kick that notification bell as we lay the smack down on WWE 2K22. One of the main things that 2K did to make it hit different was the change in gameplay and presentation. One of the biggest changes is the control scheme, which I feel this is the biggest change to control since SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. Remember when the grapples were on the right stick? In 2K22, the face buttons have been given new input, such as a new light and heavy attacks, and also the block and dodge defenses, which makes the gameplay feel faster along with the removal of the reverse meter from the last few games. In fact, the gameplay reminded me of TNA Impact and WWE All-Stars, which takes time to get used to as I would recommend hitting up the tutorials to get an idea of what to expect. Presentation-wise, the team added several new camera angles to both the entrances and the gameplay, which looks close to authentic to WWE programming with the overuse of camera angles like on Raw or SmackDown. The game's audio looks to have improved since the last few games as new lines have been recorded for the commentary team of Corey Graves, Michael Cole, and Byron Saxton that sounds like they're interacting with each other similar to what we hear on TV, along with the crowd having some new sounds and chants that you hear throughout the match. One of the newest features that 2K added thanks to the feedback they received from the community was the return of GM mode for the first time since SmackDown vs Raw 2008. Here is where you decide many aspects with the goal of drafting the best talent and create the best matches while keeping up with talent morale, budgets, and feedback. My Faction is another new addition which is similar to NBA 2K's My Team, where you collect and equip cards to make your faction the strongest it could be, along with completing objectives to earn currency for stronger cards. Along with these new modes, other modes from previous games have returned. The main campaigns in this game is the 2K showcase that focuses on the career of cover star Rey Mysterio that goes from his WCW days to his significant moments in WWE. Like in past 2K showcase modes, you can decide to follow the prompts or do it your own way. The team did a great job with the presentation of these matches as during the cutscenes, it transitions to the actual match that took place while Rey himself gives commentary on the match. As well as My Rise mode, where you take a created male or female and take them up the ranks from the performance center all the way to the main events, where you can decide your path on whatever is best for your created character, such as how to respond or determining whether to be a face or a heel. And these storylines can go over the top at times, not just the typical, you people did this cliche. One example, I kid you not, of these storylines has your character as a heel steal Eddie Guerrero's limo and enter the ring with it to spite Rey Mysterio. Talk about massive heat! Universe Mode also returns with the ability to play as a single superstar to rise in the ranks, which reminded me of Career Mode from SmackDown vs Raw 2009. And you could also play this mode like in past installments where you decide the schedule, the roster, and everything in between. In regards to match types, while there isn't any new match types in this installment, match types that are here have gotten some notable improvements, especially in the weapons department. For starters, there are new weapons to bash your opponent with, such as a hockey stick and a stop sign. When you keep beating your opponents with some of these weapons, you may notice some new dents and breaks the weapons would have, which improves the realism of a weapon, like the steel chair getting bent or the hockey stick breaking in half. Another change is in the TLC or ladder matches. In previous games from the recent years, when placing a ladder or a table, you were limited to where to place them and it felt restrictive. Here, you no longer have to worry about that as you can place a ladder anywhere in the ring. Speaking of creations, the creation suite have retained many creation modes with some added tweaks such as favoring a creation part so you don't have to backtrack looking for it, as well as the ability to add a custom render for your created superstar, which would make it seem like they're part of the game like a Kenny Omega or a CM Punk. As well as for the first time, you could download and upload creations through different consoles, and not just on only one console. As well as during online play, you could decide what server to use for your preference. In terms of graphics, 2K went all in with some members of the roster getting some major overhauls, and visually they look great, even on last gen. As well as the lighting and pyro got major improvements. 
As with past WWE games, there are issues that have unfortunately become a staple in the series, along with some questionable choices that I felt like asking, what exactly were they doing during the extra time of development? For starters, the controls. While it does take time to get used to, I feel like it didn't need to be changed. In 2K19, the controls work fine. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The combo system feels like something that didn't belong in WWE games. It felt like it fit more to Tekken or Virtual Fighter, which unfortunately makes almost every superstar play the same, and having to keep up with the combo list can get frustrating at times. As I mentioned about issues that I've played the series for years, you get the common issues. Hair clipping, collision detection, the AI feeling dumbed down, along with some bugs and glitches that will eventually be patched in future updates, and even the online service has had a tough time, especially when needing an internet connection to access my faction or the online services. While the camera angles are a plus to the presentation aspect, it feels wonky in multiple man matches, like in Fatal 4 Ways or even during post-match replays. I feel like using them way too much or it should have looked good in multi-man matches like they do in one-on-one -on -one matches. While it was exciting to see GM mode back, sadly it's very limited as you only have 3-5 to five matches with only one-on-one -on -one and tag matches and you can't really make a custom brand. If anything, you might as well just stick to the original GM modes from SmackDown vs Raw. My faction feels like something that is best suited for mobile devices like WWE Supercard, and it does not help that it's reliance on microtransactions like it was in my team for NBA 2K, although it has potential. While it's nice to see 2K improve the creation suite, some of the decisions made were very questionable. Like, why did they remove advanced entrance creations, or not having any new arena parts? I mean, sure we got more venue sizes and graphics, but it would have been nice to see more stages and parts like the taxi from Royal Rumble 2000, or even the big electric chair from King of the Ring 2001. It just makes Kray and Arena feel outdated in terms of options. And speaking of outdated, let's talk about this year's roster. It is odd to say this, but I was actually glad this game's roster was outdated. I mean, sure there were notable omissions despite their attire and creation parts still being in the game like Adam Cole, Brian Danielson, and The Fiend. But it is pretty nice to see some still in the game despite being released or left last year. Just add some creative superstars and you can make a custom show with them. But unfortunately, this year's roster took a toll in the showcase mode as some of Rey Mysterio's biggest matches such as his WWE pay-per-view debut at SummerSlam 2002, the Royal Rumble match in 2006, and the triple threat match from WrestleMania 22 were noticeably missing. Personally, I feel this is one of the weakest showcase modes 2K has done. Even in my rise, there are several characters with alternate versions in the mode that are exclusive to that mode, like Dominic Dijakovic, which makes no sense as some of their entrances are in the game by created entrance, yet you can't use them in the universe mode or even exhibition. Talk about ass backwards. At the end of the day, I still think that WWE 2K22 is a step in the right direction for the future of the franchise, and 2K made the most of the extra development time it had. This is one of the rare cases where the tagline actually represents the game. This was the most I've played a WWE game in years. However, 2K should address the feedback it received from the games and look to improve them, whether it's DLC or through patches or even for future titles. I mean, sure, some of the modes and features have room for improvement or should have kept it what it was, but I feel as a transition from one generational consoles to another, it's exciting to see what the future holds for WWE games. If anything, this game actually reminded me of when WWE 2K15 came out for both last and next gen consoles, and how some features were limited and or removed, and by the next year, they were not only added back, some were approved. I hope that this will be the case for when WWE 2K23 comes out. It is a shame that the presentation and fast paced gameplay had to be overshadowed with the limitation of the creation suites and underwhelming features, but that shouldn't turn away any players. This entry has indeed turned a corner, not a perfect one, but enough to see have strong support for the future. All in all, WWE 2K22 for the PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X, Xbox One, and PC gets a 7 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching this review, and if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up as it helps the channel. If you still haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and check out my other videos as well. Once again, thank you for watching and take care. Peace out.